you're working with a charity. People need to feel purpose, and people find purpose in work. But you have a you have an interesting perspective on this because the the way that I was brought up, you know, in in the schools that I went to, the way that I think people of my generation were brought up is find something that's meaningful, and then try to find a job in the thing that you find meaningful. Whereas one of the things you preach is find a job and then try to find meaning in that job, which is kind of polar opposite. Can you can you talk about that a little bit? Well, look, I mean, in the end, what you want is meaningful work. And let's define meaningful work as, uh, a, as an activity that you're passionate about, uh, that moves the needle in, in some way, and that compensates you in a way that excites you. The question is, how do you get there? And today, the path starts with passion. It starts with, well, sit down and think about it. What would make you happy? Right? What, what do you see yourself as doing? Right? Identify that thing. Now, let's put together a plan. What sort of education do you need? How much time should it take? And you put all these shoulds in front of it, right? And now, and now you have a plan. And when you get to that place, congratulations, you've done it, right? That's insane, right? <laughs> I mean, that, that, that's insane. It's kind of like saying, all right, you want to be happy in your in your in your in your love life. All right. Are you going to go in search of your soulmate or are you going to go uh, where the people are and start getting to know them? Right? It, just, it just depends on how hard you want to make it. So one of the big lessons from Dirty Jobs was the people on that show collectively were having a much better time than the average person would suspect they would be having, given the fact that most of them were covered in other people's crap, or crawling around in some godforsaken <laughs> pit of despair, or doing some vocational consolation prize thing, right? These people aren't supposed to look happy. They're not supposed to look self-actualized. They're not supposed to look prosperous. The dirty little secret of Dirty Jobs was that easily 40 of the people we featured on that show were multimillionaires. We never talked about it, because I didn't want it to be a, a polemic. But success doesn't look like the version we've been sold at all, at all. So, you know, having fun with that, that kind of cognitive dissonance is, is great. Show, showing people examples of the plumber who began his or her trade with learning a skill and now has seven trucks and 32 employees, that's important. Those people, over and over again, the septic tank inspector up in West Wisconsin, the, the skull cleaners in, in Oklahoma City, I, I can go down the list. None of them set out to do what they were doing. None of them began with, what would make me happy? These people looked around to see where everybody was running, and they ran in the opposite direction. That's where they found opportunity. Then they found a way to get good at it. Then they learned their trade and then they, they mastered it. Then they found a way to be passionate about it. So they got to the same place, but they didn't start on this snipe hunt of what will make me happy. They looked around and said, where are the jobs? And they got them. And do you, do you think, weird question for you, do you think that same thing applies in personal relationships? 100%. I think it applies in everything. I think, you know, our brain is obviously our our, our best friend and our and our worst enemy. You know, it, it'll it'll do whatever we tell it to do, right? I mean, if if, if you assign it a task, it, it's going to go until it can complete it or die trying. Just be careful of what you assign it to. You know, I mean, if you if you tell your brain the only way you're going to be happy is if you find your soulmate. You better be prepared to embark upon a worldwide, never-ending tour of chronic disappointment. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be expensive, right? I'm not saying settle. See, it's another binary choice. This is what people are going to say to me. when They're going to be like, so you're just saying just go by, just what, arranged marriages? Well, I don't know, but statistically, arranged marriages do pretty good. You know, they do pretty good. So I'm not saying that. I'm no, but just... you're, you're right in the sense that, you know, there's, there's always talk about passion nowadays, passion in marriage. And what the social science tends to show is that passion in, in any relationship is that it's very high at the very beginning. And companionate love is that it's very low 
And then in very short order, passionate love drops precipitously and companionate love increases precipitously. And so you can bet on passionate love, but no matter how you bet on passionate love, within a year, that passionate love is going to be declining. The question is whether the companionate love is actually going to last. And so if you go into Time it with- frame. Exactly. If you go into it with the mentality that this is something you're going to have to stick to, the chances you have a successful marriage are going to be a lot better than I'm going to go into it because I'm passionate about it. Because every job eventually becomes a job. No matter how passionate you are about your initial belief in a job, and I love my job, and I'm sure you love your job, eventually it gets to the point where, yeah, I got to get up this morning, got to go to work. And it's still you getting up and going to work. Happiness is a, it's a, it's a terrific symptom. It's a terrible goal, right? It's just a terrible goal because it's a it's a sucker's bet. If it were if happiness were that tangible, then every then the same thing would make everyone happy. But obviously it it doesn't, you know? But I just I I'm sure of that. I'm not sure of much, but I'm 